Our guest speaker today is Jody Levinson, who since 1995 has been a website developer currently based in the Seattle area, and she's president of Trout Dream Graphics Incorporated. And thanks for joining us, Jody. Oh, thank you. Well, since 1995, your business has pretty much evolved right along with the evolution of the Internet itself, uh, yes? Yeah, I started developing commercial websites, oh, it was a good nine months before the release of Netscape 1. So it was the very early days. Some of our older students may actually remember that. It was a very simple interface with the Internet back then, correct? Yeah, we basically had um, uh, the tools we had to work with were uh, Notepad (laughs) and Photoshop. A whole lot of text. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what have you seen over the last uh, 10 years or so, the decade? What's been the general trend in website design going from text to uh, what we see today? Well, you know, it's interesting. The the development has uh, gone through some interesting evolutions and and continues to do so uh, quite rapidly. Uh, In the beginning, uh, websites were what we would call one to many. Uh, It was a a, a, like a brochure. Companies would have a brochure, and it was one organization or one person or one company. uh, propagating their information to an audience of pr- hopefully many people. Pretty much one-way communication one-way flow. One-way communication, yeah. right. The messages went from one to many to one to one, where they can uh, customize it so that individual people see customized content depending on their history with the site. And the companies were able to track that information using uh, cookies and registrations and other sorts of information to mm-hmm. uh, create a one-to-one relationship. And that certainly enhanced the commercial viability of uh, the Internet. Which Yeah, I think that uh, there was a lot of hopefulness in the early days, and, and uh, a lot of hopes were realized, a lot of hopes were dashed, certainly, in the, the dot-com uh, boom and then bust. Uh, but uh, I don't think, since I've been involved in the Internet, the... the assumption was that it was going to be commercially viable and uh, that there was going to be a way to use it. I think it's not always been clear what's been the best way to use the Internet. And uh, and then really, there's, there isn't one way to use the Internet. There's, it's evolved along. There's not really one web. Uh, there's so many different things going on, so many different models, that uh, there's a great deal of flexibility. Mm-hmm. And companies are expanding that every day with creative ideas that they're using to uh, attract attention and uh, gain trust of their audiences. Certainly a work in progress, and we haven't reached an end point yet. I mean, wh- where do you see where we're at now, and what are the general trends? Where is web, web development uh, heading? Well, you know, before I said we, we had gone from one to many to one to one, and now what we're seeing is many to many. And that's the Web 2.0 social networking that is uh, quite a buzzword these days with uh, sites like Facebook and uh, MySpace. Um, But, you know, not just those gigantic organizations. Even in small ways, small companies are able to uh, take advantage of the Web 2.0 many-to-many model uh, by creating communities of their site users and they're actually able to uh, use their their site users to create content for their sites. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the sites I've been working on have developed communities of their uh, their their users that uh, uh, submit articles that become content on the site. They uh, network with each other, and uh, it gives people a reason to come back to a site over and over again and creates an atmosphere of community and trust uh, that the company is, you know, has created and is, is, is behind. And isn't this a wonderful age where a, a fresh startup business for just the cost of a hosting, which is minimal, in fact, you can even get free hosting these days, and a clever idea and a little bit of web design, and you're up there competing with the, the big guys. Yeah, like, you know, the old saying, no one knows you're a dog on the Internet. <laughs> uh, you can be a small uh, entity and, and look like a, a much larger one. Um, one of the advantages that 
aside from just you know the the your website, which is sort of like the you know the lobby of your building, uh, is the ease of communication across the internet that allows people individuals working out of their homes to create uh, virtual networks of people that they work with that make themselves look like they have a large staff. Uh, and they're not an official company uh, residing in or working in one building, but they're networked across the country or even around the world uh, working together to provide services to their customers that they couldn't on their own. So is that why you're advising your clients is to focus more on this trend towards greater networking, greater activity, rather than necessarily bringing in some of the fancy graphics and bells and whistles that a website can add? You know... uh, I have a kind of a, a I mean I, I know I'm a graphic designer and and I I have a great deal of interest in the way pe- things look but that's really not what's important on a website these bells and whistles and uh, uh features um, those are the result of a company and looking at their bottom line of what they want to accomplish you know what do they want the a person coming to their website to do once they've seen the website. And if you start there with your objectives for what you want your clients to do or what you want visitors to your site to do, then you start looking at what are the tools that are available to move them in that direction. And if uh, having social networking, if having um, an online community, if having um, a flash presentation, um, if having a... uh, um, a YouTube uh, uh, subscription group, you know, whatever it's going to be that is going to move your clients towards the goals that you have for them and and also move your clients towards the goals that they have for themselves, the better you're going to do. But there's no bell or whistle on its own that has value. Mm-hmm. Is there it's, a- all, it's all in, in what it does for your objectives. Uh-huh. And is, is there a general best tip that you offer your clients along those lines? What should they be considering first and foremost as they go through the, the, the development phase? Yes. The, the first and foremost thing that I always advise my clients to do is to put themselves in their user's shoes. They should know who their user is, know who their, their ideal client is, their ideal customer, who are the people that they want to reach, and always try and see everything from their, their point of view. There's so much competition on the Internet, and uh, your, their competition is one click away. So that if someone arrives at your site and they don't see themselves in what they see on your site, they don't see their problem, their pain, their solution right there, uh, they don't see that you have uh, um, looked at it from their point of view, they're going to be off to the next one. And the first company that they come to where they can say, oh, this person, this company has thought about what my needs are, that's the company that's going to get the business. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, it's a refrain uh, heard throughout marketing courses, target, 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 know your target first and foremost. Absolutely. Absolutely. 